often asked what our earliest records are in the archives. Not a lot of early records exist, presumably because of the Great Fire in 1889. One of the earliest, however, are delinquent tax lists, which have always fascinated me. Consisting of several volumes, the lists date from 1873 to 1878. The names on the lists and their property location tempt me with stories waiting to be told. The lists of delinquent city taxes were turned over to King County Treasurer for collection, and once collected, proceeds were returned to the city. In an 1876 volume, the first page is a letter from City Clerk William A. Inman requesting the County Clerk William H. Schutte to proceed with collecting taxes for 1876. The handwriting and ledger book is fun in and of itself, but the page also has a red seal for the city that says, City of Seattle, Washington Territory, a reminder that Washington did not become a state until 1889, well after Seattle's establishment as a city in 1869. The seal includes a scene with mountains, trees, and water, which still seems apt today. The ledger lists names, plat or location, worth of property, and how much owed for the many different types of taxes, such as road pole tax, road property tax, city tax, gaslight tax, and fire tax, as well as the total. If the tax was paid, that is noted in the last column. The list usually gives you an idea of where someone's property was. Many are located in Boren, Denny, or Eastern Edition, but other plats are listed also. Pencil notations add some information. Mrs. Sarah D. Libby is listed as having property at Blocks 1 and 2 on Block 9 of Bell and Denny, which would have been in what is now Belltown, valued at $200. But no personal property is listed, so possibly there was no building, just property. A few lines down, James G. T. Libby is listed as dead, and just above him, George J. Lorbert is listed as gone. Sarah Libby's tax of $1.76 was listed as paid, but James Libby's tax of $4.62, for which no location was given, there is the notation dead. Mrs. Sarah D. Libby's name shows up on an 1890 petition requesting that the fire limits be extended so that frame buildings, presumably wood buildings, two stories high be permitted. This tells us that Sarah Libby did not remarry and her property was possibly involved in the Great Fire. Further research would be required to find out more. Also in the list of delinquent taxes, Ty Lee, Hop Lee, Wan Lee, and Yu Lee are listed, but no address is given, only the note, wash houses. No value was given for their real estate, only the personal property. All their taxes are listed as paid. Marie Wong, in her book, Building Tradition, Pan-Asian Seattle and Life in the Residential Hotels, states that 12 Chinese businesses were clustered around Washington Street between 2nd and 3rd. In 1884, an E.A. Dowd wrote to the mayor and city council for financial support because his building on Washington Street between 2nd and 3rd Streets was destroyed by fire. He was writing city council for help because his building was uninsurable, quote, on account of its proximity to Chinese quarters. I was unable to find any more information on any of the Lees listed, but this is the earliest reference to redlining I've seen. One of the largest property owners, Henry Yesler, is listed in the 1877 list. His property is valued at $30,000, and taxes owed totaled $931.19. If one had the time, you could recreate occupants on a map, or at least the names that had locations, and compare it to the census. You could compare names to see where they appear in city records and elsewhere. There are so many stories to chase down in these volumes, listing those who owed taxes, if only one had the time. To find these items and more, please visit seattle.gov slash city archives. Mm-hmm.